Good day and welcome to another week of A Week at the Plot. It is Tuesday. I had quite a busy day at my desk yesterday. Had quite a busy day at my desk so far today. Though, what's the time now? 25 past five. I did leave the house at 4.30 and it's taken me all that time to get down here. I got down here about five minutes ago. I met a number of people on the way, some that I haven't seen for quite a while. So, of course, we had a catch up and a chit chat. And uh, then one plot holder I met as they were leaving. So it took me 50 minutes, let's say, to do what normally takes me three minutes. But, you know, there we are. It's lovely meeting people and chatting and catching up. Though I do want to get some seeds sown. So today I have finished off my piece for the Guernsey Press, my March piece for the Guernsey Press. That went off to the features editor at about 20 past four. It's all about potatoes and planting potatoes. And of course I have plenty of memories of doing that in Guernsey. So that is as usual intermingled with what I am doing on the plot. So when that is out I'll share it as I normally do on Planet Vegetaria, on Richard and Paul and we'll put a link of a community link on YouTube as well with the article. I really do enjoy doing them. I, I And today was another one that I sat down at my desk at 8 o'clock and it's sort of 8 a.m. this morning and it sort of flowed out. So that was really, really great. I then go through and refine and, and you know, change words around and I moved a paragraph. I felt it worked better if it was earlier on, so I moved that around. So, yeah, I do enjoy that. I suppose each article takes me about three hours in total last time I think it was shorter um, but three to four hours and then I have to pick out photos um, some of Richard's that he has taken whilst we've been in Guernsey and photos of me planting potatoes here so yeah that went off to as they say the features editor a short while ago <clears throat> yeah just over an hour ago but I wanted to come down because I want to sow some more seeds. I had meant to come down tomorrow, tomorrow, yesterday, but it just was so busy. So I'm down here now and it's tomato seeds. Normally I will sow tomato seeds at home. I have sown them in a grow house next to our house previously in like January, February time. So what I'm doing is... I'm sowing them in the polytunnel. So they're going into trays in the polytunnel. The trays actually have lids, so they'll be tucked away. It's touched, I think, 17 or 18 degrees today. It looks as though it's going to be four degrees overnight. And as we get to the end of March, there's a couple of nights that it may we may get frost. It touches one or two degrees, so we may get frost. But I'm not too worried about that because I have found in the past when I've sown in the greenhouse or in a polytunnel or in a grow house, as I say, at this time of year, we've done OK. So I'm going to be doing a first sowing and then we'll see how those do. Amish paste is one of the varieties it's a variety that we've grown for quite a few years now. Quite a few of our friends now grow it as well. It's a really, dare I say, meaty tomato. There's not an awful lot of liquid, but it does make a fantastic sauce, i.e. Amish paste. It makes a great sauce that can be bottled and in our case can be frozen. Red ox heart. Um, ox heart shaped, as the name suggests, uh, a large tomato again, just like the Amish paste, bigger than the Amish paste, in fact. And again, one that doesn't have too much juice inside. It's quite meaty. Pink Bulgarian, um, egg shaped, sort of pearlescent pink to the skin and just a lovely eating tomato. I think that tomato on toast and then grilled with some salt and pepper is just divine. That's my favourite way of having pink Bulgarian. 
black crim this has a it has a blackness to it and a sort of pearlescence to it as well it it can be flecked in sort of golds and greens but is largely a, a black tomato standard size where the others that i've mentioned so far are a bit larger standard size but it's lovely to have this black tomato which when you open it up it has dark red flesh inside a bit more juicy i mean the than the others but a really great salad potato potato salad tomato in my mind amish sherbet the um amish again a bit like the amish paste but this one sherbet so um again it's sort of pearlescent and it can be yellow and it can be pinky and i don't think they did well for us last year no, the year before. Last year, of course, we hit, were hit by blight in July and we had no tomato plants after July. They all had to come out. So I'm hoping these Amish sherbet do well. Then two new ones to us this year. Soldaki, which is a standard size red tomato. It's Polish, not grown it before. I got these, I think, from... Was it from Jane? Yeah, Jane Kelly sent us these seeds. I'm not sure if she has grown them before or whether they're new to her this year. Not sure. And also sent to us by Jane, Brad's Atomic Grape. Now, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of chatter, I think, around Brad's Atomic Grape. It's a plum shape, um, not too large and is green with flecks of a different color on it potentially red gold blacks um it'll be interesting to see how that does because i have a, a condition called barrett's esophagus which is um which is the result of the acid in my stomach and and acid reflux i do like tomatoes if i'm going to eat them raw that have a low acid content to them and brad's atomic grape has got a low acid content and um, it's not good for bottling therefore because you need higher acid um tomatoes for bottling not that we do any bottling or canning all of our tomatoes that we keep we process into the pasta sauce that you've seen us do the roasted pasta sauce and it all gets frozen in individual portions so that we can take portions out so yeah those are the tomatoes that we're going to be growing this year i've got plenty of other seeds of other varieties that i could grow but these are the ones that i'm going to grow and as per usual any seeds that i'm not growing this year i'm keeping in a tupperware in the fridge so that they're nice and cold so that they last a long time so i'm going to be going into the poly in a moment and sowing these i will actually put a link to how i sowed them last year or the year before so that you can look at that link rather than showing you the process that i'm doing again one other thing that i'm growing or sowing today not growing sowing and growing as i was talking last year is courgettes a golden zucchini um where are these from i think they're from the organ organic gardening catalog which i don't buy from now because they have so many things in the catalog that aren't organic seeds and plants which i just think is ludicrous and i know i mention that all the time but you know it's mad um there are i think about well, let me tip them out four seeds i've got four seeds left and i would like four courgette plants so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sow these in pots actually today and they're going to be in the polytunnel and they'll be under a cover in the polytunnel and we will see how we do with the those four plants I do have some other seeds that if these don't germinate or they don't germinate and grow well, I have got other seeds that I can then sow to make up for what doesn't work well in this sowing. Anyway, I'm going to get into the poly and start seed sowing. 
I filled up these trays with compost for tomatoes and these pots for the courgettes. Each of the labels, you can't see them, but they do have their names on. And I've laid out the seeds quite geometrically. It pleases me anyway. So here we have Red Ox Heart, Amish Sherbet, Amish Paste, Pink Bulgarian, Brad's Atomic Grape, Soldaki, and then Black Crim. Doing eight each of those, eight of the Pink Bulgarian, I think there's 16 of the Amish Paste, 12 Red Ox Heart, and 12 Amish Sherbet. How many is that? 12, 24, 36, 40, 48, 48, 56, 64, 70. Fingers crossed. And in these, I have sewn the courgettes. I've just made a hole. You can't see it, but there's a hole there. Drop the seed into the hole. And now I'm going to cover up these with a thin layer, maybe about one centimetre, and then tamp down. And then I'm going to fill up these holes and tamp them down. And that patting that you may have heard just then was me scaring away the first mosquito that has landed on me of the season. Gosh, those mozzies, when it gets warm, they love to come out, don't they? Right, I'm just going to top up with compost. Right, so that's the tomatoes in the back and all covered up. I've actually shut the vents of the covers here. And I'm going to get another cover for here because I want to make sure these are covered overnight as well. And in fact, even during the day, the courgettes will be quite happy to be in the polytunnel and under a cover first thing I'm going to do before I do that though is label these up because I notice I haven't put labels on. That's our first sowing of courgettes, fingers crossed for those four, and also our first sowing of tomatoes for the year. We do have the Hamwell Carnival coming up in June which is an opportunity for the allotment to have a stall and to raise funds for the allotment association. So I think I'll be sowing some more tomato seeds for that. And hopefully these will do okay, or do well in fact, what am I saying? Okay, hopefully they'll do really, really well. And we won't have to sow some more for ourselves. But if they don't do as well as I hope, then we've got plenty of time to do another sowing in maybe three weeks time, middle of April, something like that, to top up the numbers. I would like to have 70. I think we had 70 last year. I would like to have 70. If we got away with maybe even 54 or 60, then that would be fine too. So that's it for this first segment of A Week at the Plot of this week. I am keeping an eye on a mozzie that is flying behind the camera. I think I've most probably been bitten once or twice already. I can sort of feel a tingling here and a tingling here. 
but we'll we'll see we'll see uh should i be eating more garlic or is that just warding off um it's over there now um is that just warding off uh vampires i'm not sure but there is that thing isn't there that garlic in your blood keeps mosquitoes and blood suckers away something like that oh there's definitely two there's one up here look oh do you see it it's there no go away oh gosh right i'm going to go before i get munched any further there's another one just come in where are they coming in from I'm going to go before I get completely munched and I'll see you again very soon for another segment of A Week at the Plot. Oh, there's a robin out there now. Honestly, robin, come in here and get the mosquitoes. That's what I need you to do, not bounce around on the ground. See you soon. Bye. It's gone over there now. <laughs> Good day. Happy sight of some chicken bedding from a neighbour, a plot neighbour, that would be going in the hot bin composter. And what's also going to be going in the hot bin composter, or some of it at least, keeping you low because there's quite a strong sun today. I'm doing the first stream of the year. So I'm going to keep the stream quite high, like you would keep on a first cut of a lawnmower. And I'm obviously going to put my fingers down to make sure there aren't any frogs in there as well. But yeah, a stream much needed. A good few hours later, and I've strimmed the whole plot. And... We had a, a unexpected visit, a lovely unexpected visit from one of the old site managers from the charity. When I say old, I don't mean old. I mean a site manager that used to be the site manager and is no longer the site manager here. So that was lovely. So we had a walk around the site and a look at things. And then quite a few chats with various other plot holders. So... I think I'm going to call it a day today. I've strimmed, so I've done that. I've done some raking. The sun is beginning to dip down in the top right hand corner now. It's just above the tree line. In about 10 minutes it will be down below the tree line. And I'm just quite exhausted because we had a really, really long an unexpectedly long walk at Kew this morning which we'll talk about in Sunday chat um, I was a bit silly and therefore I think we did about 5,000 more steps than had been anticipated not that we anticipate doing X amount of steps we just know our route um, or the, the areas that we like and the areas when there's lots of kids um, the areas to avoid um, which we did this morning. There were lots of school parties. So, yeah, I'm going to call it a day now. I'm I'm making a list of some of the jobs that I want to do. I am definitely going to be taking nets off things tomorrow or Saturday. I think most probably tomorrow. The broad beans are flowering. The green nets on the left they can come off there now though I do need to make sure I cover one of those brassicas because I want to save seeds from it the brassicas on the left the the nets can come off those and the pollinators and bees can enjoy the flowers as they come out but yeah I think I'm just going to sit here quietly for five or ten minutes and then wend my way home. See you again very soon. Bye.
Good day. I didn't get down here yesterday, so a job that I didn't do yesterday I have just done now, which is removing the netting from the brassicas and also the hoop tunnels of netting from the broad beans. We'll have a look at those another day, but they are flowering. What I'm doing is I'm laying the netting out and then by doing that, I'm ensuring that any bees or other pollinators that might be trapped in the folds can get out because I keep on turning it over. So anything that is trapped can get away because, of course, we don't want anything to be trapped in the, the folds. I'll do it to this one later and put the blue pipes away. Won't be using those for a little while yet. And also today I have been doing weeding of the lettuce bed and watering of the lettuce bed. And of course you've seen me removing the Brussels sprouts as well. Let me just halt there till a plane has gone over. I've taken out two of the Brussels sprouts and left them for our fellow neighbour plot holder to give to their chickens. And instead of taking them all out today, I'm going to take them out over the next few days to a week. And then each of the stalks can go to chicken people on the site, which will be good. Yeah. I do need to cover one of these brassicas here. It's a brassica that is a Portuguese cabbage that has crossed with a Nero di Toscana or potentially a Cavolo Nero and I'm going to put a muslin bag over it to ensure it doesn't cross pollinate again when it flowers and then I can save the seeds from that because I rather like it. I rather like the shape of the leaves. They're sort of fatter than the usual Nero di Toscana and Cavolo Nero. They're more like Portuguese cabbage and they're crinkly like Nero di Toscana and Cavolo Nero so much more crinkly than the usual Portuguese cabbage. Actually I'm gonna leave it here for today. I've done the watering as you can see. I've watered these end beds as well which is where we put the Mange 2 in. Nothing there yet and I'll be back later on to do a few things but all of them are really going to be just tidying up and folding things up like these nettings and things like that. Yeah, it is a rather glorious day and there's lots of bees out as well and other pollinators of course too. Yeah, I'll be back down later to do a little bit more. See you soon. Bye. Good day and welcome to the first Sunday of British summertime. So early this morning British summertime began and the clocks moved forward an hour. It's now 11 o'clock. If it was sort of this time last week it would have been 10 o'clock therefore. And coinciding with British summertime and having had a week of really warm, lovely, sunny weather hitting 20 degrees down here, it's turned cold and grey. <laughs> it's just typical, completely typical. I mean, we did know that um, this week was coming, this week, next 10 days, let's say, is much, much cooler 
than the last week has been it's been forecast that way for the whole of the month and yeah that forecast really hasn't changed so we've got a cold week stroke 10 days to come but never mind that's that's british summer for you certainly british summertime where we are today but it's not going to put me off i'm going to get on with some more seed sowing and to do that i'm just going to pop into the poly as you know i did quite a session of seed sowing of tomatoes earlier in the week and today i'm sowing another variety i thought i'd just keep it till the end of the week what is the variety that i am sowing guernsey island tomatoes so these came from Leanne in New Zealand. Thanks very much, Leanne. Hugely appreciated. They're from the Koanga Institute. And as many of you will know, I come from Guernsey. And Guernsey tomatoes were the mainstay of the growing industry in Guernsey for about a century. And then in the 70s, supermarkets wanted different varieties. And the sort of Guernsey tomato which had been the mainstay, as I say, for a century, fell by the wayside and other varieties started being grown. So supermarkets started demanding different varieties of tomato. And that, for me, began the demise of the tomato growing industry in Guernsey. So I've been looking for the Guernsey tomato for quite a while. And Leanne found these in New Zealand. I mean, just just utterly bizarre um, so they're from the Koanga Institute got them direct here so that's absolutely super and I'm going to be sowing them in exactly the same way as I did earlier in the week with the others and I just hope that they germinate well and they grow well for us as I hope all of our tomatoes do because I would love to be able to taste a Guernsey tomato again and Leanne also um, sent us some for uh, Vivi as well. So Vivi has some. I'm not sure whether they were sent direct to Vivi or they were sent to us and we gave them to Vivi. But Vivi is growing the Guernsey tomato as well. So it will be interesting to see how we both do. I said to Vivi that mine will always be the best because I know what a Guernsey tomato should look like and taste like. So, yeah, even if mine aren't the best, I might say that they are. Anyway, after I have done that seed sowing, or this seed sowing here, there are a few other things that I'm going to do, and it's just sort of tidying up around and actually doing things to keep warm. I mean, you know, I've got a body warm on today, but it's still quite chilly. But once I've sown these seeds, I'm going to be tidying up around and about the plot. I won't take you with me. I'll just leave this week of a week at the plot here um, because we did quite a lot of sort of bits and pieces yesterday of watering and that type of thing. But it really is quite a grey day. But one thing that I'm going to leave you with at the end of this a week at the plot is a rather happy sight of blueberries in flower or at least one blueberry bush that we've got in flower i think it's duke i'm not quite sure but i think it's duke and it seems to come early every year so i'm going to say goodbye to you now and leave you with some bobbing blueberry flowers see you very soon bye